d we'll have to test out what you bleep and what, what <laughs> you do. Say, say a few in a row and you'll bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Sod. <laughs> Scott. Sod is. <laughs> That's below the belt, that is. <laughs> yeah, Sod is actually. I think it's fine. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another telecoms.com podcast. The core team are back together with Jamie and Ian. Um, and uh, this week we're going to be talking about, I think we're going to talk about Apple, because uh, they announced a bunch of stuff and both me and Ian covered that. I've, I've tried to avoid it, but nearly all the most read stories on telecoms.com this week are about Huawei, so there's just no escaping that. And then I think we're just going to talk about Europe in general. There's been a few little bits and bobs. We've been traveling around, all that sort of thing. So I'm just going to go for the general subject of Europe. Um, and just to remind you that if you're listening to it on SoundCloud or on iTunes, you can watch it on the site or on YouTube or on Facebook and vice versa. And before we get into Apple, a couple of plugs. We had earlier on this week, we had the second telecoms.com meetup, which was a great laugh. And I'm saying it on the pod to sort of bring awareness to it. But we haven't sort of, I'm not actually giving away the URL to the site, so I'm sort of urging people to just sort of get in touch. I'm also not going to announce my email address on the pod, so just, you're, you're a smart bunch. <coughs> you can work Scott, it out. Scott at telecoms.com. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. Jamie yeah. at telecoms.com. He's the one you want. He's in your VP yeah. of Meetup, anyway. Um, and so that's good fun. And seriously, if you're interested in coming along to some drinks that we pay for and loads of people in our industry just having a giggle, then let us know. And then the other blatant plug is that we just announced the Glowtel Awards, which is an abbreviation for Global Telecoms Awards, which is telecoms.com ones, and that's going to be absolutely great. I just put a story up about it today. So anyone who's listening to this, make sure you check that out. Right, I've stopped the self-publicity, and we'll it's start doing some, up. some actual podding. It's good booze up as well. Yeah, that's also a good, good booze, booze up. up. And there's a casino. So basically, the opportunities said. to come and get drunk with us are almost and, limitless. And gamble. Yeah, and gamble. <laughs> So, and who wouldn't want to get drunk with us? Although we're, not with real money. We're a great laugh, even if I say so myself. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I've got to give a special shout-out, actually, for coming over. A couple of people came over from Dublin just for the last meet-up. So, well played, Jonathan and Julia, on that one. You get anyone over from Sweden? No, well, we plan to. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's another story. We will. Yeah. I, I, we're going to get people from all over the world. Um, who Apple. wouldn't come? Who wouldn't come? Exactly. It's worth it. Coming over from Sweden. You had Apple there. Yeah. <laughs> that would be surprising. Yeah, Tim Cook was there, <laughs> judging us. Um, so Apple, they did a big launch event earlier on this week, uh, but it wasn't about hardware for once. It was about sort of services, mm. I think is how they how they build it. Um, the the headline announcement from the services thing is, well, it's a, it's a sort of twofold um, sort of video play. The main thing is that they're getting into original content so just as other Fine. people have for yeah exactly <laughs> so obviously netflix been doing it for ages um amazon's been doing it for ages and then we've got people like hbo where that was always their core thing yeah anyway uh and i think they've realized that they can't really play in video on demand without producing some of their own original content and, and we'll get into the sort of merits of that in a second and the other part of it was positioning this apple tv or apple tv plus or whatever they're calling it as a as an aggregator of other services, which in principle is a I think we've chatted about this loads of times. Um, in principle, it's a sound idea because it's becoming like if you go onto a smart TV now, it can take you quite a while to sort of navigate through, and it's really hard to find stuff. Like sometimes kids want to watch something, and we can't remember whether it's on Netflix or on Amazon or on, on iPlayer or whatever. You're still going to have that, though, aren't you? Well, well, I, I don't know. know I the mean, smart TV, the the kind of apps line up at the bottom of the screen, yeah. and the two that we mainly use are Amazon and and um, what's Netflix. Netflix, yeah. And there's iPlayer next to that, you know, yeah. which, and then there's the ITV one. Um, but he, but I'm imagining with a with a kind of, I mean, Amazon itself is becoming an aggregator, yeah. So you you have their free content, yeah. No, it, it is an aggregator. You have their free content. You have shows you can buy, like rent for two fifty. Yeah, yeah. Food. You have BBC streams, you know, or an HBO stream that you can go and pay a bit more. I didn't know and, that. Yeah, yeah. I knew about. Amazon I knew about now. buying. They, they, they've already that aggregator model is something they're already I doing, see. which is, I think, one of the reasons some analysts thought they might be a bit resistant to kind of going into. And they're actually involved in this. They are, thing, they are involved. And in Netflix it. So Netflix isn't. isn't. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, but the ultimate, what's leading up to is sort of an ultimate aggregator, and I'm not even necessarily saying this is 
possible. I don't know how it would take, but somehow that made the whole thing easy. Yeah. Where you could find a bit of content really easily, re um, regardless of what platform it's on, yeah. or even know that it's on multiple platforms and make some kind of decision accordingly. I think there's there's a market for that, and then there's also a market for a one flat fee for absolutely everything yeah. type of aggregator. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, that's the aggregator the dream. This is that me and um, uh, uh, one of the analysts are talking about that. Well, it's Paolo essentially. Okay. I talk to, I talk to Paolo all the time about this sort of thing, and you know there are. My phone is frozen now, so it's really frustrating. Okay. That I can't get it. Uh, but there were sort of like seven areas that they sort of identified to make a genuine um, aggregator model, and right. you need uh, you know you see a single window. You need consistent experience. You need integrated content in a single window plane, um, a single integrated bill. Uh, and I can't remember what the other ones were, but they're the, you know, that is the aggregator yeah. model. It's not navigating between um, different windows and different apps uh, in in on on it through one platform. Yeah. It's having all of that integrated into a single platform, a, yeah. a, a sort of like a unified library. Yeah. Um, so you can actually sort of navigate between shows without having to exit and re-enter other places. Exactly. Which is um, which is basically what Amazon's doing. Right, okay. Yeah. I'll have um, to check that out properly. I haven't really explored that. I mean, if you go to Amazon and you look, you'll see, um, you know, you've got all the kind of rows and you scroll down and it brings right. up, you know, primes for rent or primes yeah. out this week. Then you've got the included stuff and then you've got channels like an HBO right, channel okay. which you can actually subscribe to the down and you pay through Amazon but you pay yeah. a bit more on top of what you're paying. HBO, really? Your, yeah, to, yeah. To, hear, to, to hear the seven, single bill single sign-in authentication yep. uh, integrated content library universal search across yep. all of them um, consistent customer experience or user experience um, a recommendation engine which factors in uh, a sort of like view and habits from every single uh, service and you uh, you need buy-in from the content owners and creators yeah mm -hmm. um, which is where I think a lot of the content platforms I've struggled is because Netflix doesn't like to hand over yeah. user experience to other people. Yeah. Hence why you never have, it's only Sky I think, which is has Netflix content in their own discovery platform. Yeah. So that is genuinely integrated, whereas others have you know, it's not integrated into right. the same yeah. discovery and then you, and you got They don't like Apple anyway, that's... Uh... No, well, that's always been a problem. I was just going to say, that Sky, you've got sub-brands like Sky Atlantic, which is basically H reskinned HBO. Yeah. Um, but yes, they're all still piecemeal. But yeah, you're completely right. I was just remembering back, like before this job, when I worked at Strategy Analytics, I remember having a chat with Ed Barton, who's been on this pod a few times now, yeah. over him. And we were chatting about, that, that was when Apple TV uh, was first going to be a thing, and they thought mm. it might be called ITV, which, which would have been interesting. <laughs> um, and it was kind of a hard way play then, wasn't it? it yeah, was a bit of it. Yeah, people because that's how that's how, then yeah. how people almost entirely yeah. viewed Apple. Yeah. So they thought they'd be coming out with this ten grand TV or whatever. Yeah. But I remember chatting to Ed just like literally over the water cooler. It was a water cooler moment. It was a genuine water yes, cooler. Yes, it was. Moment. The water was <laughs> instead cool. of in the pub or the bog. No, no, this is in the office. Um, uh, it, no, it wasn't in the bog. God, do you have chats like that in the bog? You got to get out more sun. <laughs> Um, and yeah, he was saying you know, the problem is getting because of the way Apple likes to do business, likes to call all the shots, getting other people, and also lots of people saw how iTunes ended up playing out, which was largely to Apple's benefit and to the relative detriment of of the actual rights holders. Yeah, and so the TV, the video industry, the cinema industry didn't want to fall into that same trap. So Apple's been having this challenge of getting th people who produce third party content to to play ball for a long time and I think one of the reasons is what I think what you were just well yeah to. so that's this is why Netflix is kind of out I guess because it I mean it's partly what Jamie said but they've also kind of pulled out their service from you can get Netflix on the the app store but you the billings not through their billing system because because that's when you end up having to pay sort of 30 percent to yeah to uh, Apple and that was something that they didn't they that's right we had that Spotify thing so. recently and then moaning yeah, yeah, about exactly. their 30 percent so yeah and that's the thing I suppose with the um you know, their kind of revenue sharing demands, whether that could affect something. I mean, they've not said anything about pricing yet of this service, no, have they? No, I don't so, think so. But they're not the kind of people who come in and, and undercut other people. No. Like they're, they're always kind of quite high price. And the, yeah. the thing about being an aggregator is that a lot, a lot of the pressure of that is people want something simple and straightforward, as Jamie's saying, but they also want to pay less, I think. You know, people get fed up with 
oh, I pay seven pounds a month to Netflix. I pay eight yeah. pounds to Amazon. You don't want to keep adding more and more services on where you're paying. There's a finite amount that. Yeah, well, I think if it ticked, if it ticked as many as possible of Jamie's seven boxes, yeah. then they could probably argue that's a premium service. But the, in the trouble then is that's going to put a huge amount of pr- pricing pressure on the industry to have a, an aggregator trying to bundle all this stuff up and yeah. say, right, here's here we're coming along, and you pay ten quid a month, and you get stuff from Amazon, you get stuff from yeah. Netflix. And it would have um, to be more well, like at a time you, you when content necess- production costs are going up. You don't um, necessarily have to bundle it all together as like, you know, Apple bundles everything. You pay $50 a month to Apple. You just have to have a single integrated bill, sort of like carrier um, carrier bill aggregation. Yeah. You elect to choose the services and then the bill is, and then it's the, the, the revenue is redistributed in the back end. Yeah. If that makes sense. So if I'm, if I, if I'm choosing Amazon or, or Apple as my, uh, my aggregator, um, I might elect to, you know, have Apple, so I pay them nine quid a month. Yeah. Spotify integrated into that, um, Netflix and BT. But then it's all going through a yeah. single aggregator platform. But, but then you're still re- probably going to want to pay less for those. Yeah. Consumers yeah. would expect, this is what happens with bundling, it's the yeah. same with triple play and quadruple play, that there's always that expectation that if you wrap it all together, that Each you pay a little bit less, less than buying yeah, everything yeah. separately. So it's part of the convenience of getting it all through one person and, and also convenient just paying a bit less for it essentially and so so that gets if apple is as it always does going to try and position itself as a premium player um then i think we've we've sort of agreed that there's a, there's a certain limited amount it can do just by sort of bundling up convenience and charging a premium price for that so the other thing and this is what i meant half of the i just think they're a bit late to the game with that yeah they definitely are no, they're definitely uh, are. Do, they've always do you know been about the interface <coughs> like a nice interface uh, look I, look at the remote, may, yeah, maybe the interface you know? it could be better than all yeah. Amazon, I suppose. I, I'm not, con- I'm not convinced it is necessarily late to the game yet because I don't think anyone has nailed the genuine aggregator model yet. So as, I think as soon as someone nails that, like I said, ticks all those boxes and and genuinely has an aggregator model, which you know, which satisfies all the expectations that we got in our mind, I think you can carry on trying and trying. I just don't think. I mean, yeah. One of my comments was how many people, you know, there's 150 million Netflix subscriptions around the world at the moment, and, you know, users, you could probably almost triple that um, in terms of, you know, in my house, we have one Netflix subscription, we've got two people using it all the time. So I reckon you could almost triple the number of active users on Netflix mm. at the moment. If you can't satisfy the content demands of 450 million users, let's say, around the world, that's a massive hole in your aggregator platform, especially considering Netflix is probably got one of the best platforms um, in terms of sort of user experience. I think it's really, yeah. really, I have really some good. Reservations about it, but yeah, but yeah. it's it's one of the best I out d- there. Yeah, and, and yeah. don't like the way it starts playing stuff when you yeah scrolling through. But then, but then the, the quality yeah. of content that they're producing is Variable. arguably the best. Well, yeah. yeah, some of it's rubbish, but Adam Sandler yeah. movies. <laughs> but, it, but there'll be a market for that. But yeah. there's have so you, much high quality content on that. It's such a massive hole to be missing from any platform that you, yeah. b- you I think put a lot together. of it is yeah, I agree on the with Spielberg that. and the J.J. Abrams shows that are going to come out. Well, that's, that's I, I think you want a platform where you can basically... So one thing I've done with um, Amazon is uh, one of the only thing shows I've kind of watched is Game of Thrones, you know, the last few years. That's and then on, because but, but that, what is that? Well, that's, okay, that comes out on Sky. It's an HBO Sky. thing. Yeah. But as soon as it's finished showing, so it runs for get eight it. weeks, you can get it through Amazon. You can buy it. You can right. Oh, buy, so you're like buying the digital you buy, box you go set in and or you whatever. You buy like a box yeah. set. Or, um, and I think I did the same with The Walking Dead years ago. Right. When I, when I thought that was good. Um, <laughs> Don't say that. My um, wife still really likes it. <laughs> But and I think if you can sort of dip in and, and buy the, the things or a tennis channel for it, for instance, you know yeah. you might want to get mm. a tennis service. So yeah. If you can get these things fr- from one place, but you know, you're not necessarily subscribing to the whole of the, yeah. of the stuff that. Well, this is one of the things I really like about Now TV at the moment is that you can buy week bundles for certain certain channels. For instance, if you're into sports, you could buy um, a week subscription to Sky Sports for I don't know the golf or yeah. we yeah. were d- we were doing it every every other week sort of thing during the World Cup um, or not the World Cup I can't remember what it was no, won the World Cup <laughs> so I mean, what it, wherever it was but we 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 bought two week uh, passes for Sky and we yeah, had very two sensible. weeks and that that for me is a really really good model yeah. which I think a lot Sky's of actually been really sensible when you consider Sky's founding business model was to just 
get you into a great big fat huge um, long term contract for them to sort of turn around and go no we're missing out on a ton of revenue but not, by not letting people pay piecemeal and to some extent threaten to cannibalise their core business model by doing so because I'm sure a lot of core subscribers went well that's, that'll do I'll just go off and pay a tenner a month instead. no it's a yeah. lot more expensive yeah, it's it's like a t- you have, to buy these passes. You got to pay like a ten or a week. Okay, yeah, or whatever. yeah so it well, is, we pay it we is. pay less than ten a month for now TV, um, and we just get the entertainment, which includes Sky Atlantic. What I'm saying is, I can get Game of Thrones for less than a ten a month, whereas previously, before Sky had started doing this, if I wanted it, I had to get a great yeah, big, yeah. So as long as you do it for less than twelve package. weeks, and then you can't get no, rid of no, it no, either. because yeah, it, and then you're tied in. It, yeah. You got to think it's for they do it for sports and movies, which are the big premium mm. packages on any Sky uh, uh, Sky tariff. You know, if you if you get sports, it almost doubles your um, your Sky yeah. monthly subscription. So and movies you know, as well. Yeah. yeah, but how is that? I still find it funny, like subscribing to like a, a movie channel. You can see any movie anywhere if you have Netflix, or Amazon. Well, it's but it's, no, I want to tune into a channel and wait for the right time to watch my movie. Yeah, well, it, no, it's, it's all it's on so demand. School. It's all on demand. It's all on demand now. Yeah, yeah, it's all on demand. Sky, it, Sky's movies. They don't have Sky Cinema demand. anymore. Yeah, they yeah, have live TV. But yeah, they exactly. also have. Like, I'm talking about the live channel. Yeah, but they also That's have moving a, away from the satellite, basically. Yeah, oh. but they also have a, di- a, a digital library. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. But and then there's also the, the these weird the little program. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't <laughs> with. Uh, you know, you have to bleep yourself now. Yeah, those boxes. D- digitally transform yeah. yourself. By the way, Pierre, some of your some of your bleeping is a bit inconsistent. The one yeah. we did, the one we did with Dan Warren, I I'll, said and yeah. you bleeped it, and he said straight after you didn't bleep it. I was worried Dan was going to think we were because of the way you say it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It just sounds dirty uh, coming out of your we mouth. We just got. <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> he just got half of mine to bleep half of what I say. You have to leave it, you know, sprinkle a little bit. Leave, there we leave, go. leave some in, you know. <laughs> sprinkle a bit. Yeah, no, I'm okay, not we'll, okay have to t- we'll have to test out what you bleep and what, what <laughs> you don't. Say, say a few in a row and you'll bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Sod. <laughs> Scott. Sod is. Oh. <laughs> That's below the belt, that is. <laughs> yeah, Sod is absolutely. I think it's fine. Right, okay. <laughs> now that we've got that Tourette's out of our system. <laughs> Um, so yes, we're talking about so we're talking about this um, premium content, and that's the other thing that Apple could, in principle, do to justify whatever premium service. and And they spent about half. I, I watched the sort of broadcast from the Steve Jobs Theatre, which oh god, it was nauseating. That, <laughs> well, it is it, all that, of that stuff. I know, is. but that it's got analysts and journalists there, and everyone's weeping and clapping. Yeah. And, it, and it's just like, where's your objectivity, <laughs> for God's sake? It's like a Huawei event. It's like a sitcom. Oh, right. <laughs> they're, they're the Chinese equivalent, aren't they? They're right. Like there's lots of women. Just yeah. there to kind of chat. There must be. There right must time. be, because it was, done, it was done so on cue as well. I wouldn't be surprised if there was one of those old-fashioned applause things. And sometimes they'd say, and then we're gonna, and then we're going to do Apple News Plus. Without saying anything, everyone go, Wah! And they didn't even wait to hear what Apple News Plus was. Well, I didn't. Yeah. I, that passed me by the Apple News Plus. Well, I'll get, I'll get onto that. That's another that. aggregator, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, Apple. I'll get onto that in a second. But, but just to finish off on the on the um, video side, so about half of that broadcast was them just getting Hollywood types on. Spielberg. And yeah, Oprah so Winfrey. Spielberg headed it off. It culminated with Oprah Winfrey. Mm. And then the various people, like Jennifer Aniston, uh, what, that J.J. Abrams thing you were talking about. Um, M. Night Shyamalan, all these various people who are going to do unique, and I thought actually fair enough, even though they really laboured the point. Yeah, I thought fair enough that yeah, you know, that's a roster, but you, know, you can't argue with Steven Spielberg is in terms of yeah. quality of of director. But then was it you that was just saying before we started that? Their budget for original content is still a fraction of, for example, it, it Netflix. Is. I mean, they could easily they've got the resources to yeah, to, they got to tons of cash. The trouble with doing that is, um, so their hardware business is not in a good position at the moment. Well, it's um, not bad, mate. What do you mean? It's it's well, they missed targets by five billion, five to eight billion for the fourth quarter. Yeah, so relative so, to their peaks, but they're still yeah. But in terms of still what making money want, that almost everyone else would be sure. But in terms of the share price, all right, yeah, they fair need enough. to they need to give investors a kind see. of new yeah, growth I see story. Where you're headed. Yeah, and a lot of investors are talking about the services business with like massive excitement because the gross margins tend to be a lot fatter. Yeah, the services. You don't have to actually if they have to go and start competing against. You know, twelve billion that mm. uh, Netflix is spending, and maybe Amazon's going to. I mean, Amazon's in a position to massively increase its budget on content if it wants to, yeah, and hasn't really done but that. Even if, and even all of a sudden, you you know, you, it's a financial pressure for years for app for um yeah, for Apple. True. I think there's no avoiding it. I read that even if those services like did really well, it would still be a fraction of the devices. Well, the margin on right. on yeah. iPhones is, is, yeah. is just sick anyway. Yeah. 
crazy. Um, but yes, but no, I take your point, Ian. It, it's not about how well they're doing now. It's how well they're likely to do, the kind of where they're going to find growth in future. And, and you're right to say that in terms of sort of profit growth, mm. that may well have topped out on the on the hardware side because they don't make much margin on iPads. It's fascinating. I remember when the iPad came out, and I was sort of writing they don't analytical sell many stuff on anymore. it. Well, they didn't sell that. Yeah, well, so obviously the, the refresh cycle is a lot longer. But there's also the margin. If you look at it, if like a, a standard iPad you can get for about 400 quid. So that's actually much less than an iPhone. Yeah. And yet there's a lot more hardware. Yeah. So, is, he, uh, is he playing Fortnite? So, I don't know what no. he's doing. <laughs> uh, so are you playing <laughs> Headbanger 10. So, Scott, what you're saying is that we need an Apple foldable phone, basically. Oh, oh foldable phone. Yes. So anyway, so yeah. I, I think I think that's a good point there. But I don't see how they can create a premium video product without having premium original content, which, as you say, is going to cost them a ton yeah. of money. Yeah. So yeah, it's also a completely different risk model from what they're they're yeah. used to. Exactly. You know, yeah. they've got they've got the eye. Uh, you know, Netflix creates these absolutely fantastic shows because, like you said, there's a lot of drudge on there as well. You know, uh, but at the same time, if 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 the guy who wrote the Stranger Things yep. um, sort of scripts presented it to 90% of the people on this planet they turn around and look at it and go what is this sci-fi yeah. we're a- not retro funding this it's a bit weird yeah. and, and you know you've got to have the guts to yeah. actually yeah. go through and you know realise that there's going to be a lot of shit before you actually mm. land on yeah. some actually and quality they, titles and they're, they're yeah. so good with comedy like you know you hear about it on Rogan all the time he talks about how when they when you do a comedy special on Netflix they just leave you alone you haven't got any of these sort of self-appointed yeah I don't see Apple doing that huh? yeah I don't see do you know Apple what I mean hands off, well like, yeah. actually, I'll touch on that in the news bit um, but yeah. uh, and then there's things like has anyone watched uh, Afterlife with Ricky Gervais on yeah. 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 that's that really never, funny yeah, do, you all, do you all like yeah. that Oh, f- I've watched yeah. it all it's in funny. the space of two days, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Because it's only six episodes. It's half an hour each. It's e- easy yeah. to get through. Fair play to that. Good. Yeah. Anyway, um, we, we better move the Apple thing on because we've got other things we want to talk about. So the other big announcement, which I thought was potentially quite disruptive, was the credit card. Um, no, yeah, I missed that one. Yeah, so the thing about the credit card is it's it's you know it's not it's more not apple pay it's apple's own credit card although they're doing it in partnership with mastercard so i'm not quite sure mastercard and goldman sachs it's goldman sachs first foray into consumer finance as well but the thing that caught my eye about it is that you get two percent cash back on everything now if you think about it you know normally like the merchants get charged something like half a percent or, or something like that by the card companies and suddenly Someone's got to come up with 2%. Every time I buy anything, I'm going to get 2% back. So I thought, firstly, that's really disruptive by Apple because that's quite attractive. A lot of people, that's a simple thing that everyone can understand. You, know, you spend a grand on it and you've got 20 quid to spend down the pub or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I also thought, where's that coming from? And some people I chat to about it reckon it might even just be a loss leader from Apple. It might just be Apple coming out with the cash, cash themselves. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like they got all this cash anyway. They're like, they're like a dragon out of the Hobbit. <laughs> Just <laughs> dig up a bit of cash <laughs> throughout their arse. Okay, yeah, you spend that on it. Um, so, uh, but yes, to do with it. that's quite that's quite disruptive. And then the other thing was the news, which you alluded to, which I thought was interesting from our point of view as journalists. So they're, they're going to be a news aggregator of certain, this is mainly quite US-centric at the moment, certain big US um, publications. The emphasis actually seemed to be more on mags. What well, about the NYT and that sort of thing? I think Wall Street Journal's involved, I think LA Times, one or two oh, others. Right. I can't Wall remember Street if NYT was. You'd think that what New York Times would be. Um, I think Wall Street Journal is. Mm. They should um, call it Apple Magazines Plus. Yeah. Well, they call it Apple News Plus. Yeah, but it's the main thing is magazines and lots of glossy magazines like National Geographic and Wired and all that sort of thing. And they've even, they're even having some kind of animated cover for them to make it all a mm. super premium experience. And that's all fine. I'm not sure I'd bother paying because that's a tenner a month. Um, I'm not sure I'd animated bother. Animated cover, what? Like a yeah, yeah, like video. Moving photos. Yeah, yeah. moving photos. Like Movies. In, like in uh, Harry Potter. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much that's exactly the same concept except those are on paper, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, but the reservation I had is the person in charge of it, when I was sort of getting quotes from the press releases, the person in charge of it is called Editor-in-Chief. Right. So Apple's got someone in-house they call Editor-in-Chief. And on top of that, you've got Tim Cook. He's He's got a quite a puritanical side to him. He's done some speeches recently talking about how we should censor more people because it's the right thing to do and it's sinful not to, using these quite like Old Testament sort of language about 
about certain restrictions on freedoms, which I don't agree with. And I just wonder whether Apple's going to be able to resist being um, sort of censorious. Let's mm, say yeah. one of the titles that's like on Wired, Wired magazine saying something bad about the iPhone or something. I do, actually, I don't think <laughs> I, I don't think Apple would necessarily censor someone slagging off Apple. But what if someone just pushed the boundaries in terms of um, sort mm. of rudeness? Or, or a conspiracy identity. theory, or, yeah, or, or, or that's, cross that's the big one, yeah, or, or crossing some line on 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 political correctness or something like that. It's possible to see. So I'd feel a little bit nervous if I was in that little ecosystem. Not that they're not that Apple's ringing me up, going it's telecoms dot com, <laughs> gonna, yes, going to be on it. Um, I'd I'd feel a little bit nervous about that. Um, cool. Okay, well, I think we banged on quite a lot about Apple, so yeah. we sh we should move on. Huawei inevitably. Um, I think we'll start off. There have been some more developments in, in the interminable uh, are they baddies or aren't they thing. <laughs> but most recently, I think, Ian, you looked at it. I know Jamie wrote about their, their mm, quarterly yeah, I numbers. Really look at it. it was mainly right. Okay, well, I'll oh, the numbers. To, I yeah, I'll yeah, hand yeah, over yeah, to yeah. Jamie first anyway, because you, you were chatting to them about it this morning. Get, give us the top line on Huawei's numbers. Uh, yeah, I mean, just good, to be honest with you. Right. Um, Kicking ass. They, their consumer business is now now accounts for more than fifty percent of total revenues. That's incredible. Um, That's, that must have gone up as a proportion pretty rapidly over the last year. Forty five percent growth uh, year on year this year. Uh, I mean, their revenues went up by about twenty percent year on year. It's the first time they breached a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, the carrier uh, revenues went down for the first time. Down, down one. Down one percent. Um, but I don't think it. I. Don't, I I'm not. I. Don't think that that is a massive issue, um, mainly because it's kind of it's kind of fits into something I've, sort of, I've been saying for the last sort of like couple of months anyway. In that, you know, the, all this political hoo ha that's surrounded for Huawei isn't going to kill it as a company. It's no. certainly going to ma maintain its um, maintain a strong position. Yeah. But there's absolutely no chance that Huawei are going to dominate the five G world in the same manner that they dominated the four G world. Um, I mean, not only have you got the political pressure. Uh, on you know not using not being overly dependent on Chinese companies, um, you've also got the operators that are trying to diversify their supply chain so they can increase competition and get a better deal. Um, you know, I mean, the thing is, they the, the, one of the things they announced this morning, and this is one of the reasons why I just think this all this political lobbying isn't massively impacting their business, um, is because they turned around and said, well, we've got you know over the last month. We have, uh, since Mobile World Congress, bagged an extra five commercial 5G contracts. And admittedly, you know, because they're not named, you can't actually say how valuable they are. Mm. But over the last month, they've shipped an extra 10,000 5G base stations as well. So they've actually shipped globally 50,000 base stations. Um, and I'm, again, there's no point in comparison because Nokia and they don't, provide that, they do don't they? want to say yeah. that, which makes me think, you know, if they were doing better than well, Huawei, they'd, say, yeah, yeah. they'd, they'd yeah. bloody say it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, but uh, I mean, this but, is... But that global figure, that presumably includes China, where there's like, you know, a million base stations or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, but then at the same um, time, it doesn't include Korea. Where they're rolling out no, faster but, than but ever. China else. is bigger than any other market in terms yeah, of the number yeah. of base stations. Well, I think anyway. uh, um, no. Uh, so all the growth over last year is about four G great base stations, and they're yeah. very, very specific when they say this. They, they, they say five G base stations. Mm. Um, so admittedly, yes, it is going to be centric around sort of China. But then you've got to think that you know ZTE came out and said forty thousand recently that yeah. they had shipped. But I, I, my. I'd be willing to put quite a bit of cash on. The vast, vast majority of those are in China. Yeah. Um, yeah. ZT, we're getting a lot of assistance but I think from Chinese states. I think as well, Huawei's probably are as well. Um, right. Well, it's quite possible. I mean, they did say they did say something like a couple of weeks ago that 50% 50, 50 of their contracts were European. Yeah, yeah. No, like I'm not, I so don't they are, dispute they that. are still getting yeah, yeah. traction across Europe. Well, I think, that, I think that's the thing, that the whole... It's all sort of still up in the air really at the moment where this is all going to go. You know, it's it, it look, goes one way and it looks really bad for them. Like all of a sudden they're going to get locked out a load of markets, and then recently there's been this kind of pushback and you know some resistance. That I mean, the European operators for a long time have been saying we don't want to get rid of Huawei, which yeah. is quite clear why they don't want to do that because it costs them loads of money mm. in swapping things out, and, and yeah, they're the really good. And, the rip and replace, would yeah. Cost them a well, they're, they're, one, they're really good. You know, and as, as that Vodafone press conference we went to at Mobile World. Congress made clear, you know, they don't want to go down to two suppliers. 
yeah. where you've got less competition. Quite, a duopoly, uh, even if they're con- yeah, competing they're, against they're each bl- other, it's always going to be good at what they do. Yeah. They've, they've always had a sort of low-cost reputation. Um, and... Mm. And, and they've already got loads of equipment installed, so they'd have to kind of spend well, this hundreds is, of minutes. So it's mean, not surprising they don't want to get rid of them. And I mean, this is um, the thing where a lot of people have been saying that, you know, when you look at the radio and transmission, so, you know, of, of, the, of the three aspects of the network, you know, radio and transmission, Huawei, for the majority of it, are market leaders. So why would you want to... I mean, this is the, the, the big trade-off. You know, security is great, and, you know, risk mitigation is the perfect scenario. But you want your technologists to have best in breed to choose from. And, you know, because you do want to produce an, the best network to sell, because mm. that will have a negative impact on revenues moving forward if you've got a shoddy network. So you do want best in breed technology, and that's the trade off you've got you've to yeah. you've gotta make. Yeah. Yeah, we, okay. We, we, so, no, go on. That's just a stunned silence, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. For like, I, it doesn't it, usually it, happen. I, it, I know, and uh, I attempted to fill it. Is it? Is it? I mean, yeah, the European thing that 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 um, that that sort of document that or the recommendations that yeah. were brought out the other day. That was this week as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just one of these. I I just don't think it's done anything. You know, they all just sit on the fence a bit. Yeah, it's well, a sitting on the fence move, really. All, all, I the, think. all the yeah. telcos, yeah, are saying we want certainty and we want political um, yeah. consi- or we want policy consistency, so we can actually invest sensibly and we can actually throw some cash without any fear. Yeah. Um, all this has done is just put a timeline on the on the uncertainty. Admittedly, it's it's removed the open ended nature of you know will they won't they will they get banned won't they? Yeah. Um, but it is still maintaining that environment of uncertainty because ultimately you don't know that Huawei isn't going to get banned until we get to October 1st when the recommendations are all brought together and they've developed this consistent um, sort of security framework across the European bloc. I mean, until that point, Mm. you cannot invest with absolute certainty that you're going to be safe. Yeah, and then we we had that UK thing where... There's that whole, there's that whole um, organisation devoted to keeping an eye oh, on Huawei the cyber security yeah. evaluation, and center. they've just gone. Uh, there's still some stuff we're not totally happy with, um, but I don't know how specific they were. Uh, they were, they were, they were talking specific, I think. right? <coughs> well, um, I think I think the issue was is that they raised several problems with software last yeah. year, didn't they? Yeah, and, and, and they said they, they hadn't done enough. Basically, they hadn't on fixed it, it so yeah. we're not because they haven't fixed these minor problems. We're not entirely confident right. that moving forward you'll be able to fix big problems. So that's yeah. as, uh, reading between the lines. That's essentially what I okay. took from it. Yeah, but they're they're undoubtedly under more pressure from the US than than anybody. Yeah. What, the UK? Mm. Probably. We, we got the special relationship. S- special relationship, part of Five Eyes, yeah. five coming eyes, out of the yeah. EU, potentially. Especially yeah. with you the know, rest There's all of sorts of reasons why <coughs> it's going to be a very difficult move that, no, when, no, when that, that decision gets made. Up, yeah. Sorry, You're going to bring up Brexit now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is... Uh, the, the big thing is, um, <laughs> with Five Eyes, uh, everyone else seems to be turning against them. You know, if you, yeah, if you yeah. actually look at the rest of that Five Eyes coalition... I was just being quite... They banned them. Yeah, oh, yeah turning against them. Sorry, I thought yeah, you were yeah, turning yeah. against Huawei. America. Huawei. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I misunderstood. So the, the Aussies have banned them. The New yeah. Zealand it's kind of banned them. Yeah. Well, they haven't actually. <laughs> They've banned told them. one uh, one company to go and use somebody else. They which, turned down. I mean, a they're 5G not, they're, they're not going to go and say to anybody else, "You can use them." Yeah. So. Canada mm. is helping the with this um, with this you know Bangs arresting the, the CFO, yeah, yeah. and you know the US hate them. So it's only the UK yeah. out of the five eyes yeah. that are actually so, sticking So we're going to have pressure, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge amounts of pressure. Especially if you want a trade deal, Scott. Brexit. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, okay. If you're going to keep goading me. <laughs> so I just noticed, actually, I've got a little... So today, re- recording this on the 29th of March, Friday 29th of March, was supposed to be a day when, day when we when we left, but... This was supposed to be Independence Day. Obviously, yeah, exactly. As obviously, there's quite a lot of dicking about still Farage going on. I just wanted to call it. That's Fier Farage and, and those, those lot. Um, but they haven't, and... And anyway, so there's a breaking thing that just came through on my phone. So they said Europe went, all right, um, you can uh, you can have till 22nd of May if you agree with Theresa May's thing, which no one's <laughs> been agreeing with it. She just gave it through, just put it through another time, and it went, nah. Oh, has it just happened? Yeah, yeah it's happened. Uh, she lost by 3344 to 286, so it's got closer each time. Right. I suppose if she kept doing it. Should get there eventually. There'll be another round of indicative votes now on Monday. Maybe, and yeah, they all passed. That's but the next they all they all got rejected. 
Um, but no, but what they're doing is whittling it down to fewer options based on the results of the first set of indicative. In votes. principle, but but none of them have they do they have union uh, any even no, a exactly. majority on. But they have to try and find sort of common lines between. Like, yeah, no, I options. understand. I understand because that. the only thing they can all agree on is they don't want to leave without a deal. Oh, there's lots of stuff they don't want to do. Yeah. They're struggling to find stuff they do want to do. But it's, this has nothing to do with telecom, is it? Really? No, exactly. No. Well, so it, it, I was, the we, point I was going to get to, which I thought would be interesting... Should we talk about this at the pub instead? Uh, well, let's do that as well. Um, is Especially now that we've got this news. So what's in principle supposed to happen as default is that we're leaving no deal on yeah, the 12th yeah. of April now. They, yeah. put, they put it forward a couple of weeks. But I thought I'd throw it out to the floor, um, just a little straw poll, what, what we actually think is going to happen. I mean, I would like it. I'm actually a, a, a totally um, gloves off lever. I, I'd be quite happy to leave with no deal on the 12th. Whether I think that actually will happen, I'm not so sure. I think they'll probably find some way of having a I long think extension. They'll find some, yeah, I think they'll find some long extension. What they'll do is they'll they'll look at what happened with the indicative votes and there'll be a lot of kind of, you know, talking going on to try right. and find some kind of common lines. Because the one thing they want is not to leave without a deal. That's the one thing they voted yeah, yeah. in. So but, they'll, but they will. That's still the default. It is still the default, but they'll consider they'll that will that's what will bring them together and they eventually pull okay. out some kind cool. of agreement. Well, we, as you I say, think. we don't want to labour it. What about you, Pierre? What do you think will happen, or do you just not give a toss? I don't have an opinion. He doesn't have an opinion. He's, I know. He's I was trying. French, to, it's I was not. trying. To, I was over. I was in. I was in Paris with Pierre during the week, trying to get an opinion out of him. He just shrugged and pouted. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jamie? What do you think will happen? Uh, I think probably May's deal will probably get forced through because I think they'll get to a certain point where. They'll turn around and Europe will go, no, we're sick of this back and forth. We're not renegotiating. You either take this deal or it's a no deal. And yeah. even yeah, though yeah. even though it is a bad deal, it's better than a no deal. Yeah. So, so you think that'll happen? I okay. think yeah. that'll happen. Well, so I'm, what, uh, I'm going no deal. Like You're going long Reece extension. Morgan, He's going May's deal. That'd people like Reese Morgan have been start to sort of swing Start behind. to waver, but clearly not well, enough I think judging not by... not waver. I think he said... Um, He'd vote for it. No, no, no. I think there will be. People. I think there will be an extension. Okay. But I don't think Europe will uh, offer any any more ground to no, change. No. So we'll the end current up. Well, I think they've already. Yeah, they've yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll end up through attrition going for May's deal. Yeah, just Probably, purely because yeah. Europe will say something right. like that. So what do I get if we leave on no deal? Do, do I get something off you guys? Do I win? No. Yeah. Well, you just get a look that says, "I'll oh, shut up." Okay. I don't think it'll All right, I've, I've done that. Been I've, I've been self-indulgence and gone to politics. So, but there is a sort of vague Europe segue, as I alluded to. Um, Pierre and I were in Paris, and we we're listening to some did you collaboration. Go yeah, we did. Did you have trouble getting back? We we, we thought we were going to have trouble getting back, but actually, fair play to Pierre. He is. I sometimes I sometimes take a piss out of him was being a bit neurotic French? when we're travelling because we're always rushing from one thing to another. But he is an absolute don when it comes to sorting out these little problems. And we got we got a message at the start. Um, on Wednesday morning this was yeah. and bear in mind we had our drinks on Wednesday evening so I was worried about that um, saying yeah everyone's striking just don't travel it's just not going to happen and we're just like oh, it. and anyway we got there early we, we were there filming with Qualcomm thanks a lot Qualcomm for letting us get that filming done nice and early and then PA just had a little word obviously it helps that he speaks the lingo and uh, and got French <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did it. He did it for GCSE. Um, Didn't forget it. Yeah. And uh, and not only did you get us on, but you got us on one hour early that left bang on time. Yeah. So that's a total. So, yeah, we thought we'll be an hour late, so we'll end up where, right where we started. But actually, we did leave on time. So I've got I've got a France trip coming up that I'm right. nervous about. Well, I think the striking's on and off indefinitely, it isn't it? Is unfortunately, it? Oh, unless they resolve it, we don't know. So, and then other Europe stuff is you were over in Spain, weren't you? Mm. Why don't you tell us what that was all about? That was a automation uh, conference, automation Zero Touch Fest. Automation Congress, uh. which is a layer one, two, three. That's, a, that's a catchy name, isn't it? Zero Touch yeah. Automation Congress. Yeah. Well, did many people yeah. congress for it? Yeah, it's probably about 200 people. Okay. I mean, it's not much bigger than it was last year. Right. But it's some fairly... Um, the nice thing is when you've got service providers presenting yeah, and talking rather than just loads of sort of back to back vendor presentations. Not that we don't like vendors, but yeah, yeah. you want to hear from yeah, the you want to mix it up a little bit. And it, let's be fair, sometimes a vendor presentation is going to be a bit well, soft sales yeah. yeah. Whereas the, the service providers get up and usually say what they're doing and what they. Um, but I think one of the things, if I took a theme out of it, it was that the focus is sort of seems to have shifted slightly, where, you know, automation has always been talked about as a way, obviously, of cutting costs. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, headcount reductions, um, putting staff onto activities where you know, they don't have to sort of spend their time Just tweaking doing, numbers, doing things that machines tasks, can do, do repetitive yeah. tasks. So, but there's a lot of talk about 
using automation to kind of improve customer services and experience so you know kind of things like this is the thing about automation because it's not nfv it's not software defined networks it's not one thing it's like a very sort of broad umbrella yeah. term it covers all sorts of things so people Indeed. are even talking about things like open apis in the context of automation where right. you can simplify operations and cut out a lot of the faffing that goes on where you have to where you have kind of non-open apis i guess and and th this makes a this Closed, makes kind of a even exactly closed apis this makes like a huge difference in terms of kind of creating service packages and then getting them into the market which is what customers want so uh -huh. so and there were then some surveys at ihs market you know guys that uh, yep. michael howard works for they've done some surveys where customer experience was coming out as a kind of number one priority for automating the business now whereas i remember seeing in the past whenever you did a survey it was always about cutting costs so, so what how how does automation improve customers service big basically because i like mean bots that, and stuff is that what you're talking about well I but you could say you could see some improvement I mean, some people AI, actually like it? to talk no, that's still automation some okay. people actually prefer talking to chat bots and right. dealing with digital tools and, and and that kind of thing but it's more about simplifying processes so you can <clears throat> get services into the market more quickly really i i'm I just so unconvinced by all of these surveys because i just think well they're surveys of telcos so yeah yeah but half the time people, people doesn't mean it's, it's going to happen yeah exactly exactly yeah. I, I think it but it's what they want you know it's what it's what they want and then all yeah. of a sudden in three years time the commercial realities of it come down yeah. and you know you have you have bean counters and ceos that are under pressure from the city and they're saying we want increased profitability and they'll turn around and say well actually i know one way we can increase profitability and get rid of staff yeah. um you know just like mm. uh, just like what well, BT it's, has done this week. Way. I think one of the reasons the, the, the focus is shifting a little bit from cost is because they're finding out that it's a lot harder to um, reduce costs with automation than they than they previously thought. Yeah. So think so. This is one point that one speaker made was that if you introduce something like NFV into the organisation, doesn't doesn't all of a sudden mean that your whole network is a virtualized network and you can get yeah. rid of all that old legacy stuff but actually what you're doing is just adding more complexity because you've still Indeed. got all the legacy and, someone's still and then you've got an these or... someone's got to keep an eye on that and all of a sudden you've got to kind of adapt to this this virtual network world where you mm -hmm. need new skills you know there's more operational complexity sometimes because you're dealing with more suppliers so this this sense that automation necessarily leads to cost reductions at first it, it, it actually can lead yeah. to, to costs going up totally and make it I'd... really hard to get rid of staff yes yeah but then you've got the very simplistic side of it you know i mean there's a reason on the network side i'm not talking about yeah, chatbots yeah, and yeah. things like that where but, it's clearer that you can you know but there's a lot of, there's a lot of simplistic things that you can that you can do with automation and sort of like general ai stuff and and i think that's where i mean just this week uh, there was these rumors that bt are Sacking yeah. a quarter of their quarter of their workforce, yeah, and a lot. But of it, I don't think that's automation. Uh, it is. It is. So well, it, they'll say it is, but it's basically they've got a lot of bureaucrats still. They got back up. They were talking about back office automation, yeah. um, management streamlining, yeah, and uh, they've got disposals. too many managers, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, I and that's the same with a lot of organisations. If people really want to be hard nosed about it, there's so many people sitting around in offices these days the that don't need to be that don't actually need to be there the but question is, is what are you going to do with those people if you lay them off but there this is, is but this is the one thing i think that this is this sort of semi proves my points that you know everyone's talking with these with this sort of blue sky ambition of you know all automation is going to uh, automation and artificial intelligence is going to make our make our, our employees so much better and they can start chasing re new revenues yeah. but ultimately you know you get someone like jensen in who is taking the restructuring plan to the next stage Mm. And you know he's adds in uh, twenty five thousand redundancies on top of the thirteen thousand redundancies that were announced last year yeah. because, yeah. Or, or sorry, allegedly adds in twenty five thousand redundancies. Yeah, um, still just a report. Yeah, at this stage. because because he is under pressure from um, he is under but, pressure from uh, the city, and automation is a big part of that. Yeah, but as you say, it's not happened, and. I think the Bloomberg wrote this up and said yes. that they talked to somebody who said they're about a quarter of the way through the redundancies that they've announced. Well, they might be, you already but their headcount hasn't gone down because right. they're hiring people to build networks. They're hiring yeah. people to, to do customer services. So there's still 100,000 employees. Last time I looked, which I think was employee numbers at the end of December, maybe, they were, they were still pretty much the same size that they were two years ago, well, a year right. ago, two years ago. And that's that, so they, they might be cutting back in some of these areas. But they, they're, they're, if they're hiring elsewhere, then they're still 
And uh, Bloomberg had done something that I did a couple of years ago, which is start comparing... They're just catching up with you, innit? ...service providers in terms of revenues per employee, because you look yeah. at something somebody like Vodafone or Deutsche Telekom, and they're far more efficient than BT in terms of revenues per employee. But BT, but Vo, um, BT on that measure has not really improved, because it's... You know, it's cut, cut in some areas, but it's but if it goes and hires loads of people to build new networks and to, to deal with a kind of lacklustre customer services operation, then you've still got the same number of people working for yeah. you. I mean, I mean, the one thing the one thing about this report, which is slightly different, is that it's uh, than before when they were talking about the thirteen thousand redundancies. It's it's not just explicitly said, you know, we're 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 getting rid of people to transform our business. In the report, it explicitly says that a target is seventy-five thousand total employees. Yeah. But it's, this is only a source, isn't it? This is yeah. not something they've come out and said. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but I, you know, I know, I know Bloomberg's Bloomberg is reputable, but yeah. you know, and and it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me because it's. And I, I suspect he's spoken to somebody who works for them. He said there's some memos going backwards and forwards, and this is what Janssen's talking about. But there's nothing actually locked down. And I, I mean, know. to be perfectly honest, it makes a lot of sense to me because you know. Janssen is he was he's been brought into. I mean, I, I oh, it makes a lot of sense to make BT smaller because it's yeah. massively bloated compared to other service providers. And, and yeah, but I'm just saying at, to do what, that is not going to be very easy. But you look at what Janssen is actually very good at doing, and he he basically combines two of the best pay, uh, sort of like online payment services around sort of World Pay and who who did they acquire? I can't remember who they acquired, but that was They're just being acquired by some no 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 US for, outfit. They, they, there was a big acquisition yeah, a couple of years ago, remember. which he managed the integration of. Mm. And a lot of people have said over the last couple, of, well, uh, you know, I don't think any many of them are brave enough to come on the record and say this, but that the E and the BT integration has never been particularly successful or beneficial in terms of the actual synergies that you get from so he might be yeah, that. two giants. Yeah, definitely. Because if you look at putting those together, the staff numbers just went up yeah. massively, and then they've stayed at that yeah. level. Really, they've never really come down. So you're saying so that he might be better than David Hasselhoff at doing that sort of thing. I mean, I mean, well, this I is David Hasselhoff tried to do it really, did he? No. Until the end, he sort of no, said, was, "Oh, we need to get rid of thirteen thousand people." He was, and then he was he left. a marketer, though. Yeah. He was a marketer. I mean, you look at his, but he, but he, look at his career. He's all about creating new products and securing new revenue. Yeah, he's not actually about streamlining. Well, well, he, well, he was right at the end, and then he, he said, was right at the he, end, and then he said, "I wish I'd announced that plan sooner." <laughs> I mean, the bloody noose has already run yeah. neck at that point, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. I think we think we've done almost an hour, haven't we? Um, so we'll knock it on the head there thanks a lot guys and <laughs> thanks a lot for listening make sure you join us for the next one